The Cardinals started 7-0 last season, and man, did things look peachy. Then it all fell apart overnight. They barely even made the playoffs, and when they did, they got crushed by the rival Rams. And now they've been surrounded by drama all offseason because Kyler Murray doesn't have a shiny new contract yet. Arizona is a mess right now. A lack of success over the last three seasons, a coach that, for the most part, is still unproven, and a young quarterback who has been good, but not incredible, due for a monster payday. The Cardinals have a big problem. Much like Arizona fans everywhere, Cliff Kingsbury is praying that Kyler Murray gets a new contract by the start of training camp. Kyler is set to make just $5.5 million this upcoming season, but then his fifth year option will kick in in 2021 and he'll be making $29.7 million. He'll obviously get a nice payday, but his long term deal will certainly be more. Like, a lot more. If I had to guess, Kyler gets somewhere around 40 to 50 million dollars per year. I'd bet on the lower side, but you never really know. I think it's safe to say that it's a good thing that Kyler didn't choose baseball, because Mans would still be trying to move up from double A. He's going to be expensive. There's really no way around that. It's what the market warrants now. But is it the right decision for the Cardinals? Kyler was must-watch TV his junior year at Oklahoma, but it took some time for him to get to that point. He barely got to see the field at all as a sophomore because he was stuck behind some guy that's in progressive commercials named Baker Mayfield. And before that, Kyler was at Texas A&M. He started his collegiate career at College Station, but struggled at times and had to sit behind Kyle Allen. Kyler had to sit out a year because of the transfer rules before he got to start at OU. But then, he made the most of his opportunity, essentially throwing away those millions of dollars that the Oakland Athletics gave him after he was drafted ninth at the 2018 MLB draft. Everyone expected him to go play baseball, but then, as a junior at Oklahoma, Kyler threw 54 touchdowns. Yes, 54 to only 8 interceptions. And oh yeah, let's not forget that he also added 25 rushing touchdowns. It's no surprise here, but Kyler Murray won the Heisman Trophy. By the time the 2019 NFL Draft came around, Kyler was the clear-cut first overall pick. So, despite drafting a quarterback in the first round the year prior, Josh Rosen, the Cardinals took Kyler anyway. Rosen got the boot for Kyler, but he wasn't the only one packing his bags booking the first flight out of Arizona. After just one year at head coach, Steve Wilkes got fired and was promptly replaced by Cliff Kingsbury. Kingsbury is a former NFL quarterback, at least technically speaking. He threw a 17-yard pass once for the Jets, but that's really it. But he did make it big as a coach. Kingsbury worked his way up and was a head coach at Texas Tech and even screwed over USC on his way to Arizona. He coached Patrick Mahomes in college and he brought his air raid type offense to the pros. The Cardinals decided to flip a switch and brought in a new quarterback and a new head coach. But was it really worth it? Kyler Murray has been very reliable and extremely consistent over the course of his career. And that's a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. He hasn't made that jump yet. It's been hyped up for like three straight off seasons that Kyler is really to make this big time MVP improvement but it just hasn't happened. In 2019, he was the Offensive Rookie of the Year after passing for 3,700 yards and 20 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, plus he had over 500 yards and four touchdowns rushing. The Cardinals and Kingsbury were still figuring things out, and they went 5-10-1. Not really that great, but Arizona did improve to 8-8 eight eight in 2020. Kyler saw some improvement, but barely statistically. But he did make the Pro Bowl, his first of two consecutive. He had over 3,900 yards and 26 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, plus over 800 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns. And of course, who could forget it came with his iconic Hale Murray to DeAndre Hopkins to beat the Bills. Last season, if anything, was a bit of a down year. Kyler threw for over 3,700 yards, 24 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. His running usage decreased to less than 500 yards and 5 touchdowns. That being said, Arizona was good, at times at least. The Cardinals started off 7-0 and things were amazing. That was until Kyler hurt his ankle and he kind of struggled down the stretch. Arizona finished 9-5 and in and the playoffs got absolutely killed by the Rams after Kyler threw two picks and didn't really do much else offensively. If if the Cardinals don't get off to a hot start, at least offensively this season, it will likely be due to the absence of DeAndre Hopkins. He's coming off of a down year, the only season of his career with less than 800 yards, a lot in part to a hamstring injury, and later a torn MCL. 
Now, the Cardinals will be without Hopkins for the first six games of 2022 after he tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. He claims he was confused and shocked after the positive test, but Hopkins reportedly didn't just test positive, but he also had diluted or tried to manipulate the test results, something you probably wouldn't do if you had nothing to hide. But that's beyond the point. Hopkins is a stud, and now Arizona won't have him for a month and a half, which is why they traded and probably well overpaid for Hollywood Brown. It's not too hard to see why the Cardinals traded for Hollywood. He and Kyler had plenty of success at Oklahoma together, and for whatever reason, it's become a trend to pair together college quarterbacks and wide receivers lately. The trade makes sense. The Cardinals needed a guy with Hopkins getting suspended, and Hollywood had played with Kyler. But damn! Arizona got fleeced. The Ravens received the 23rd pick in the draft, plus a third rounder, just for Hollywood Brown, who has one, barely, 1,000 yard season. Absolutely wild. In general, Arizona has a really interesting roster. The Cardinals have AJ Green, Zach Ertz, and JJ Watt. Now, if this team was from 2015, they'd be unstoppable, but it's, it's 2022. Rondale Moore is likely going to be out of the slot to complement Hollywood and Green, at least to start the season. He didn't have a huge role as a rookie, but I like his chances at making a big jump this season. James Conner has just been an absolute touchdown machine in Arizona, and I'd expect him to still have insane usage in the red zone like he did last season. If you look up the definition of average in the dictionary, the Cardinals' offensive line probably shows up. They aren't bad by any means, but they aren't exactly good. Although, if you look at how many times Kyler got sacked, especially as a rookie, a league leading 48 times, you'd think otherwise. It's a bit of a misleading stat, though. For one, Kyler is mobile and wants to extend plays. For two, he's probably the best quarterback in the league at getting himself sacked, and that was definitely the case last season. Kyler is also pretty good at fumbling too, and he managed to do it 13 times. 13 times? Kyler deserves like an award or some shit for that. There are a lot of things standing in the Cardinals' way of being a top team in the NFL. It feels like they've been hyped up probably way too much in the past few seasons, and they just haven't really lived up to it. And it doesn't really help having to play for the NFC West. Yeah, you get to beat up on the horrendous Drew Locke-led Seahawks twice a year, but the Rams just won a Super Bowl and are still the team to beat in the league, and the 49ers were in the big game not too long ago too. I know Cliff Kingsbury has done some good in the pros, but let's not kid ourselves. He's no Sean McVay or Kyle Shanahan. It's a hard division, and the road to success is a tough one. Now, don't take this video the wrong way. I need to make this abundantly clear. Kyler Murray isn't going anywhere. There's not a chance in hell that the Cardinals trade him away or even let him go to the free market anytime soon. He's got one year making scraps, and in 2023, he'll be on his fifth year option. Worst come to worst, Arizona will franchise tag him after that. Unlike the Browns, the Cardinals are going to hang on to the guy they drafted first overall and give him the payday that he truly deserves. Regardless, the Cardinals are currently in the middle ground of good, but not great. And unfortunately, just being good doesn't get you any closer to a Super Bowl. 